Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. This is the bare minimum algebra series. Today we're going to talk about the five properties of numbers. So this is the bare basic of what you can and what you cannot do with numbers, what to assume and what not to assume. So let's just start off with the first one, which is going to be the associative property of both addition and subtraction. So that counts as two different properties. All right. So the first two, as I mentioned, is the associative property of both the addition operation and the multiplication operation. Fairly simple. What associative property means is basically how you group the numbers does not matter. It does not matter in any way, shape or form. Now, we are familiar with PEMDAS and what to add, subtract, multiply, divide, so on and so forth first, right? But what this is saying is fairly simple. If I choose to add six and three first, then add two, it will have the same answer as if I choose to add three and two first, and then add six, right? So six plus three is nine, plus two is 11. 6 plus, and this one's 3 plus 2 is 5, so 6 plus 5 is still 11, right? The same thing occurs with multiplication. So, for example, in this one, we have 7 times 4 times 2. If I choose to multiply these two first, 7 times 4, which is 28, then times 2, right, that's 56. Whereas, if I choose to multiply these guys right here, all of a sudden, four times two is eight, seven times eight is still 56. So it doesn't matter which one, how you group it first, the answer is still the same. Now here's the key. It only works with addition and multiplication. Let's talk about a common mistake. So this is a common mistake. Do not do this. You will get the wrong answer, right? We assumed and we know, at least to a certain extent, that associative property works for addition and multiplication. Since subtraction and division are closely related to addition and multiplication, why does associative property not work for them? Well, we can see it, right? Let's just say, for example, these are all now subtraction. These are all now division, and we're going to carry out the same thing. What if we choose to change the way we group the numbers, basically which one we solve first, right? For this one, if we choose six subtract three, which is going to be three, then subtract two, we get one, right? Whereas this one, right? Three subtract two is one. Six subtract one is all of a sudden five. Notice that the two answers are very different. The same thing is going to happen when you start dividing and you group it differently. So for example, here, seven divided by five, Four, well, it's going to be a decimal. Don't really want to show the decimal. We'll just keep it as a fraction, seven divided by four, because it looks nicer. Seven divided by four, then divided by two, basically times one half. It's going to be seven over eight. Okay. If we change the order in how we divide it, right? Seven divided by, well, this one's four divided by two, which is going to be two. So all of a sudden, it's going to be seven divided by two. Notice that there are two different things. You have a seven divided by eight on top and a seven divided by two on the bottom. Two different number. Please, please, please do not assume that because associative property works for addition and multiplication, that it will immediately work for subtraction and division as well. The next two basically properties three and four is the commutative property of addition and multiplication. So commutative property, basically means you can switch the placement, the order of the number. So let's just say switching order of number does not matter. Order slash placement of numbers does not matter. Hopefully you can see this. Okay. So fairly simple. What it means is, for example, when you're adding, if you switch the numbers around, the answer is still the same. Six plus three is nine. Three plus six is still nine. Doesn't change. When you do it for multiplication, once again, seven times four is just 28, right? Switch it around and you have four times seven. It is still 28. So the beauty of this is that, yes, you can switch it however you want for addition and 
multiplication and it doesn't change the answer in any way. Once again, let's look at the common mistake that people would create regarding commutative property. So you guys can sort of guess what the common mistake is. Once again, if you assume that because it, commutative property works for multiplication and addition, that it should work for subtraction and division as well. Not the case. Let's look at these examples. Six minus three is three, whereas three minus six is negative three. Two very different answers. Seven divided by four is actually greater than one, right? We can go into the decimal if you want, but I don't want to make this video super complicated. Whereas four divided by seven is less than one. So clearly these two answers are already very different. So once again, commutative property does not work. Right, I'm writing this out to show you guys and we talk about it, but it actually does not work for subtraction and division. I erased the title, darn it. All right, this is the fifth one, distributive property. Fairly simple. This one is actually combining addition and multiplication together. That's how you can intermingle the two into one equation or expression. So what you can do in this situation, instead of going PEMDAS and solving it just like that, you can distribute it. What that means is that everything outside the parentheses, you gotta equally share it within the parentheses through multiplication. So it's three times the quantity of five plus two is the same as three times five, let's just put parentheses just so it's not confusing, plus three times two. In this case, this would be seven times three is 21, whereas this one would be 15 plus six, still 21, right? And this one is an example where you're most likely see in this kind of case where distribution occurs is that you have a variable in it, same idea. And that's why you also hear the whole foil situation first out then in uh, whatever you want to call it. But the idea is very simple. Just be equal, right? When you distribute, distribute it to everyone. Don't forget any single person because if you miss one of the numbers, because some of these guys might be more than two, it might be three, four, five, six, seven different things inside, right? Just distribute it all. So this one is going to be six times three plus six times x, and then they are the same. This is distributive property. All right, so let's talk about two different things before we end this video. The first one is, well, here's all five properties. Associative property of addition and multiplication, commutative property of addition and multiplication, and distributive property, which, well, as we mentioned, is a combination of addition and multiplication. Now, how to remember this? Well, hopefully, distributive property is fairly simple. You're distributing, like passing out, right? So you gotta make sure you are spreading it out equally through multiplication. Hopefully that makes it easy to remember. Now, some people get co confused regarding associative property and commutative property. Now, for other languages, it's gonna be a little difficult, but then just understand that, at least in English, the associate and commute as like sort of the root or the key can help you remember which is which. Commute is moving around. So think of it this way. Since commute is moving around, you can move the order of the number around. That could be a way to remember what commutative property means. Associate usually is how you relate, right? They usually they, your associates or who, who you intermingle with. So in that case, it doesn't matter how you group the numbers together, right? You wanna group the first section or the second section or the third section, it doesn't matter. So, associate, you're grouping. Commutative, commute, you're moving around. And distributive, you're distributing, right? Equal share to everyone. So that's a way for you to remember it. Now, here's the last thing I wanna mention before we end this video. And this is the idea that since associative property and commutative property only works for addition and multiplication, how can we make it so that we can use it more broadly? Fairly simple. The ones that are giving us trouble is usually the subtraction and the division. However, here's my hint to you guys, and we don't need to go into too much detail because you guys are experts on this, right? Uh, you want to change the subtraction and division into addition and multiplication. Now, I don't mean to just, I don't like this, I'm gonna change the operation just because. I mean that there is a way to rewrite the problem so that it ends up being an addition or multiplication problem. So here's the thing. Guess what? Instead of subtracting, you can add negative. Add 
all of a sudden you're doing an addition problem. Instead of dividing, you can multiply the reciprocal, right? That's the same as dividing, and all of a sudden you're multiplying. So there you have it, all right? Hopefully this video is helpful. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.